Hey y'all, so we are jumping back into Unity Muse today. We've already covered Animate and Behavior. Uh, I've covered chat in previous videos, but more so using U Muse Chat within the, the website itself. We're going to go into an implementation of that within the editor in a future video. For this video today, we're sticking with Texture and Sprite. So Texture is to generate PBR-enabled materials that can be seamlessly brought into a Unity scene and Sprite is to generate 2D assets that match the style of your game. Both of these are text to image generation. So the first thing I want to do is arrive at this website. So I'm going to do a Google search for Unity Muse. Once I'm here, I'm going to click the top link, which is unity.com products Muse. From here, I can hit try for free. And then it's prompting me to start a trial, but I'm already registered and signed in. And I want to click on Get Started with Texture. So at this point, it's important that you have an editor open. So I've gone ahead and opened up Unity 6 in HDRP core, meaning I don't have any template scenes or anything, but I can bring it into this scene. So I'm going to close the wizard here, come back into the website, and I can either read all of this or I can just hit install. So I'm going to hit install the texture package, hit open Unity Editor. And now because we have an editor open, it's going to automatically open that and populate the install package by name. I can hit install. So I'm going to let this finish out while I am. I'm opening up our website, hitting get started, hitting install the sprite package, opening that Unity Editor seeing it populate the package name and hitting install for me. As soon as this finishes up, we will be right back. All right, so we have those packages installed. Now, if you go to Muse up at the top, you have new sprite generator and new texture generator. We're just gonna stick with those for today. I'm gonna dive straight into new texture generator. So we have what AI model are you going to generate from? How many images? the generate button, a prompt, so you can explain via text what you want to get out of this, a negative prompt, so you can explain what you don't want to get out of it. So let's say I was doing a, uh, a mountain, and I want a mountain uh, side that has a lot of rock and gravelly parts, but I don't want it to have any moss or trees. So I could say I no moss, no trees, don't want any green, that type of thing. Then you have an input image that it will aim to conform to and to use uh, to the amount of strength that you designate. I'm going to actually use a shape for this first one. So what I want to generate is icy rock because I think that'll be cool. We may even do icy rock and then like molten rock or something just to do some cool fire and ice stuff. So within icy rock, I can create a pattern or rather pull from a pattern that's been generated for me. And let's say I want something that's relatively uniform that I know is going to be tiling um, and should all be good to go. And I'm just going to generate from here without doing anything else. I feel like we're on the right path, but we're not quite there. So I'm going to generate four more and see what we get. I'm pretty happy with... Maybe this one up top. So the thing that I like to do first is generally just view it as a PBR material. So once you've gone to the three dots and selected view as PBR material, it's going to pop up and you'll be able to get in and view it. Uh, note that whenever you click on this, there are other options to create more variations based on this, upscale, etc. But I'm just going to hit edit on the PBR material that we have here. I don't feel like the height is nearly what I want it to be, so I'm going to pull that up a little bit more. And I feel like that's working pretty well. So if we tiled this by two, what would that look like? That looks pretty good. I do want to note that I've seen a small issue with this. If this is coming up as all white to you, as if it's just been blown out and overlit, Come over into Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, and just make sure that in here your rendering pipeline has exposure. 
that is dialed in properly and that your HDR sky, if you're using one, is using an exposure intensity that's reasonable. So I'm gonna dial all that off, but just know that you can play with those settings and that generally gets it back in to where you want it to be. So I'm gonna call that good. I'm happy enough with this that I'm gonna hit download up here in the top right. Going to create a new folder, call it materials and call it icy rock mat. And then this scene's just a little bit bright for me. So I'm just gonna do a file new scene, basic indoors, create, don't save this scene because we don't need it. All right, so I've now made a uh, an icy rock and a molten rock material. I think I'm happier with the icy rock and the amount of time that we have for this tutorial. So I'm just going to create the sphere, grab our icy rock, throw it on here, and know that we can play with any of these settings if we want to. So honestly, that's looking fine for me right now. I'd be interested to play with some more of these settings. But I think for now, let's just leave that where it's at. Maybe we tile it four by four and see what this looks like, or five by five. That's looking pretty solid as a baseline material. Let's say next to that, we wanted a sprite that was a, let's say a fire. And a lot of this is going to be the exact same. There is a style strength. So if you want, you can change how much influence the style has. You still have your input images down here. So I could even draw. So something like this might be able to help. And then let's say style strength goes down so it's not too, too stylized. We're going to remove the background and we're going to generate. I like this first one a lot, so I'm going to pull that down into my assets, close out of this, pull it into the scene, probably not as a texture for the ground. We'll just pull it in as a sprite. And then we'll say, gonna bring this right under here. reorient our spotlight so that it will be facing up. Come down here and make this red. Maybe grab a point light, pull this way up so you can see a bit more. scale this way down. Then let's come over here into the shader. Sprites default. I'm fine with that, I believe. So we'll leave that where it's at. It's kind of a cool image that we've now created, not having to lift a finger in the art pipeline. And I'm gonna leave this something like this for today. So the idea is that we created a sprite through text to image. We created materials or textures rather that could then be put into a PBR material through text to texture. And we've been able to get them into our scene very quickly in a way that does not look rushed. Uh, and I really like that. So let me know what you think. How do you feel about the Muse tools? How did you feel about this look at texture and sprites? Obviously, there's a ton more we could do. We can use sprites for UI. We can use texture for ground textures, walls, bricks, whatever we really need to get into. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. 
I'll see you in the next one.